Sorry, I just always want to do that at the start. <laughs> well, you were supposed to arrange that Anthony jingle at the beginning, so. How do I do that? He's yours. Uh, well, he already did it once. I think the thing is to work magic with technology or something, but. That is way <laughs> beyond my competency. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, absolutely. Uh, so. Hi, yeah. Alice. How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> Fabulous, gorgeous day outside. Oh, beautiful. The weather is so beautiful. I, I think now it's just, I think with the season, I just want to live outside. <laughs> well, you, you kind of have to right now. So lucky you. <laughs> in the midst of renovation. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. But on that note, on living outside, we have some exciting things happening over the summer. Oh, yeah? Do yeah, tell. we do. <laughs> So in July, we're going to have a youth day. So for teens to come out uh, to a farm in Mary Hill, beautiful place. If you haven't checked it out, like I think we even have, there's a Facebook page on Mary, Mary Hill Friends. Uh -huh. Check it out. It's a beautiful place. You can go fishing. And so really all like our focus this year is just about connecting back with the land, with nature, because I think we're all really tired of uh, being cooked indoors. Uh -huh. Uh, so we're doing a day in July for the youth, for the teens. And in August will be a modified version of Africa Camp. Again, it will be outdoors with some art activities and some nature things. Maybe we'll make them plant things, although August might be a bit late to plant things. Ooh, oh, yeah, I just came up with a good idea. <laughs> they can make some sprouts. They'll grow by the time, you know, like it's a week, right? You know what I've been doing actually is peas because they sprout so mm. fast and then, you know, they only have to be like yay high and you can like lop the top off and throw them in salad, which might not thrill yeah. a kid, but they grow fast. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, it, it's thrill. It, I think those are like, there's only a few things that kids will have the patience to watch grow, right? So, uh, so yeah, watch out for more details. We'll have details on our website, uh, connect with us through email or any of that stuff. So that's some exciting stuff upcoming over the summer. And of course the link picnic is happening and we're partnering up there uh, with, uh, with link picnic summer and uh, doing some exciting things there too. So if you're a black owned business, please reach out to us. Um, I will we'll tell you the secret later. If you reach out, then I'll tell you the secret. Do you know what the date was for Link Picnic? Oh, man, you ask me the hard questions. Sorry, um, I know, we're, we are there every year. We have probably been at Link every year for 10 years. So, uh, you know, it's an event that's really close to our hearts, especially because we don't have to organize it. <laughs> so we can just go and hang out and relax, yeah. enjoy the vibe, like catch the music, like, you know, catch up with friends, which is what a lot of festivals are about. So, yeah, we have a lot of love for Link. <laughs> yeah. So it's that is the 21st of August. Uh, okay. That is the Link picnic. So for the Africa Camp Days, most likely right now it will be 7 August and 14 August youth day uh, did we pick a day was that the 31st of July I don't know anyway we'll let you know what they do and for more exciting information <laughs> when we figure out what it is <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's the glory of it and because of COVID you always have to be able to be flexible at the end of the day so i blame COVID for everything so yeah. <laughs> i'm having a bad hair day it's definitely COVID. <laughs> yeah so get in touch with us and uh yeah some fun things happening at bring on the sunshine during the summer yeah i'm actually i have to say alice like this is so amazing to me that you are able to pull off programming like during the whole like we we've had to modify but we have not cancelled anything through this whole COVID period like we mm. have been like so there's words for it it's like it's like mobile or yeah it's like the, there's something that hippos do I forget what it is it's like agile hippos or something <laughs> but you know like if we everything, adapt everything that COVID has thrown at us is thrown at you like you have found a way to pivot and still deliver some kind of programming still find a way to bring people together you know, still yeah. find a way to tell the story. So it's honestly like, it's incredible what you have pulled off. So 
Kudos. I, yeah, no, I have a good team. It's not just me. So I have a great team and I'm I'm honored that they make me look good. And I think, you know what, like, um, like we always often say, or we've been saying, we don't really talk about ourselves a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times people want you to pinpoint like, oh yeah, we do Africa camp, we do festival. But the great thing about bots, we're always ready to respond to a need, right? Like we have our key events that we do, but we're always open to saying, oh, you know what? This is really what the community needs at this time. Yeah. And so a new program comes up and a zone to dance comes up and, you know, and now, now a cafe comes up. So it, the, you just never know with, with, the, with oh. these folks. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's, and it's funny cause we've had like conversations when, or, you know, like we're writing grant applications like everybody else is these days and, you know, talking about the work that we do and you, know, you get questions like, so tell me about the community that you serve, you know? And I'm like, we are the community that we serve. So we actually know what we need. You know, yeah. like we are like the moms and dads and, you know, like we are the kids. We, this, this is our community. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I've, I actually find like so incredible about the work that, um, you know, Bring on the Sunshine has done is it's like, it's all like this asset, asset based community development, like really building on the resilience and the strengths of the black and African community, you know, bringing their beauty and their joy and, you know, just like all the skills that we, we do come with many of us, yeah. you know, who, you know, you don't have like Canadian work experience or whatever that thing is. Uh, but we have like such um, like excellent personal skills and, you know, just sort of caregiving skills and all those kinds of things, um, you know, and bring on the sunshine has allowed many of us to, you know, bring, bring our strengths, uh, mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a way that can really like help and bless community and and, and help the, the family around us right so yeah no absolutely i think we've been we feel blessed that we've been able to grow and you know just figure out what it is that we like to do and be able to do it mm -hmm. and i i feel like we've also been able to pass that on with the youth leadership team you know whether it's the staff that's working for us or whether you know it's uh, the volunteers we really try to lean on, okay, well, what do you enjoy? How can we build that? You know, you don't have to know it, but you must be interested, right? And then we can go from there and stuff. Mm -hmm. So coming in today, I actually didn't have a topic really prepared. I think part of the problem for me is that I feel like my heart is still really heavy with, with the 215 kids, with the thing in London. It's, it's kind of like you just get knocked out and you're like, what is it that I can talk about in this moment that, you know, mm -hmm. that can make, that can do justice, that can really have an impact. And I don't know, my heart is just heavy just looking at all these things that are happening, right? And uh, all these stories that are coming out as well on some of the residential schools, it's stuff that we already know but right now it's that moment to actually pause and absorb it all, right? And yeah. it, it, it's it's very heavy, but <laughs> I don't know. How have you been feeling? Well, I mean, <laughs> you, you know, I'm pretty much wrapped up in my own life right now, <laughs> uh, which has been a, a very happy- It's happy a bubble. blessing. That's happy, a blessing. Happy bubble. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a happy bubble to be part of. Uh, but you know what I have found myself wondering, like, like last year was just crazy. You know, the murder of George Floyd, like Black Lives Matter, the marches, just like the intensity of everything around that. And just like, you know, you're like, this is this is a pivot point. Like, this yeah. is it. This is when things change. Like, mm -hmm. this is, you know, this is it now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're we're continuing with the same struggles in the community. You are facing the same struggles that you faced last year and the year before. They're still here in front of you this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the children, the bodies of yeah of the children, and then this family in London, and you're just like, is it the pivot? Like, I mean, is it a really long pivot? Like, it's not a month. Maybe it's like four years or ten years or I don't know. Is it a pivot? That's a great question. I don't know that it is a pivot. I don't know that I can say that things have changed for the better. I feel like here in Canada, especially, 
what we do or what we have done with the George Floyd and all the things that happen is say, oh, no, that's in the U.S. In Canada, it's, it's different. In Canada, it's so much better. We're not like that here, right? And so it's going to take us longer to fight through it because, you know, we've been in denial for the most part for the past year when these things are coming out. So now when stories are coming out from here, I don't know. I, I'm always hopeful, but with, you know, with caution because we, my, my heart can't take a lot of disappointment, right? So, but I mean, it's important, I guess, to find um, positive things uh, to, to keep me grounded, to keep us grounded. Yes, there's, there's, this, there's this whole ugly side, there's these ugly things that happen. But I think for Bring on the Sunshine, really, this is why we exist to say, yes, there's discrimination. Yes, we feel it. But I'm not going to let it define me. Like as a Black person, I'm going to try to rise above it. Or how do we learn with each other, Black and white, to rise above um, the circumstance or the environment that we find ourselves in, right? So I think, you know, definitely after you're taking a moment of, and, and you're trying to, to now figure out what comes next, mm -hmm. find those positive things and connect with people don't, who don't look like you, people who don't talk like you, people who just are not from this country, like, you know, different religion, whatever it is, right? Uh, and I noticed like I'm I miss that so much like I already live in Elmira so you know you have to work that much harder yeah. uh, to find the diversity not that it's not there but it's just keeping a really low profile because yeah just that's the, the environment that we're in and with COVID and being forced home all the time and you know like your your relationships and your connections have really shrunk down like to their yeah. smallest kind of or the smallest bubble that it can be mm -hmm. and I miss you know having like all these like amazing right? people yeah. from incredible countries with like phenomenal food and like beautiful children yeah. and I really miss having that as part of I my would life agree. I yeah. would agree I would agree so much and I guess for us we probably miss it more because we didn't have the festival in person right like yeah. usually we get all these people from everywhere in one space and we do quite a lot of community work and we're in so many different spaces that it you know we actually get exhausted whereas this year we kind of you know we've done the zoom thing but it's not it's not really connecting it's not breaking bread so it's um it's very much at a different ex extent, so. Yeah, um, I just keep thinking about that street party. <laughs> like once enough of us are vaccinated and like COVID is back in its box mostly and we can actually get together and celebrate. Like, I feel like we should shut down the streets like they did at the end of World War II and have flags. We, well, <laughs> what we can do is we won't tell Selma, but we can pencil it in for the Link Festival in August <laughs> and, you know, given where we'll see where COVID is at the time and then we'll just kind of <laughs> we can have a parade without her knowledge on the street oh we'll be in trouble we're not doing that no nope. I know I know <laughs> I hope Salma's not listening so. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure to like add her name in the chat so she knows <laughs> to this one <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I think like you know we're just talking about Link and and Salma who hates to be on camera, but she's actually got the most interesting story. We were having a chat with her um, a few weeks back, and she's been living in Waterloo Region for like fifty years. She what? has such history. She yeah. she has such history. It's always so great to talk to her. She's it's like one of those things where you get wisdom that's grounded here. Like we have our roots back home. But, you know, you need to know the history where you live as well. So it's good to connect with people like her. Yeah, sure. well, and, and Salva Fletcher, if you're listening, <laughs> she goes to every single event that involves like the Black or African yes. community and she takes yes. photos the whole way through. Yes. So if, if she's been doing that for even 20 years, never mind like 30 or 40, can you imagine like the archives that she's got? The stories that she, yeah. yeah. But then that's because she recognizes the value of collecting these stories because ordinarily yeah. they wouldn't be, right? Yeah. You know, it's not, not your mainstream media that, that is interested in that. So. 
Absolutely. So yeah, kudos, no. kudos to Salma Fletcher. <laughs> well, the, today today's conversation is absolutely very random. So that's great. We just wanted to touch base and say hi. And uh, we are happy. We have some summer students working with us, and they've been absolutely great uh -huh. so far. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Michaela. And um, yeah, so we are looking forward to revamping this Tuesday, Tower Tuesday, as you know, we get some more youth input and organizing it and, and uh, stories and, and that sort of thing. So keep watching. I guess we should mention actually that heading into summer, we're looking at doing it every two weeks and not every week so that we can also be outside and go to the beach and do all the kinds of things that you guys want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. So reach out to us. Uh, we've shared a little bit about what, what's on our mind this, this today. Thinking about being outside, we're thinking about the summer and the programming that will come up. And obviously, just even backyard barbecues. That sounds, I think I could just take my bed and live outside. I so. know. We actually, we had a friend come over, um, you know, all legal and outside, whatever, la the last weekend. And we put on like this massive spread. Like we were having a party for 20 people. And we were like, oh, it was a little bit over the top, huh? <laughs> we were so excited to have someone come over. Yeah. So Absolutely. Well, thank you for listening to our chats. Uh, please get in touch with us at uh, info at Bring On The Sunshine, Jackie at Bring On The Sunshine, Alice at Bring On The Sunshine. We'd love to talk to you, find out more about what we're doing this summer. You have a great evening. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. <laughs>